Hello and welcome to Around the Wickets on the Papare.com. What a week it has been for Sri Lanka. They finally registered a crucial win in that fifth ODI. And I have Faviz Maharouf once again with me to analyze what happened in that game and to preview for the coming week as well. Welcome to the show, Maha. Thank you, Roscoe. Uh, what a performance it was by Sri Lanka in that fifth ODI. Everything went according to the script. They got 366 for six and uh, they reduced England to 132 for nine. Your thoughts on that performance? I always told... Uh from the beginning, Roscoe, it's all about the opening parts, whether it's the batting or the bowling. So that's exactly what we got, um, you know, in while batting. We, we won the toss, Barrett first on a beautiful uh, batting wicket. And, um, you know, partnership more than 100, that happened after a long time. So one hit happened, and a little, little bit of luck to the batsman as well, and because of uh, some pathetic uh, fielding by England, got to be said, a few drop chances, and the energy levels were so down. And if you take their bowlers, most of the bowlers lack match practices. That that was seen uh, seen very uh, very often. So that actually helped us, and also uh, you know every card that we played came right. I mean you take Kusal Mendis, you know so many chances given. Finally he came good, smashed few, well, what six sixes or something like that. And Dinesh and Dikkal from Sadir, everybody from Jinesh Chandima, and with the ball, you know with the uh, new ball, three wickets up front. This always makes lives easier. So I thought one of the best. Best game of uh, one day cricket for a long time for the Sri Lankans, and also it's good to see and you know what we are capable of, but just that not being consistent enough that's been the problem. So they should take this uh, momentum and they should analyze what they did right to uh, you know win, a compre win it comprehensively against the uh, number one uh, team in the world. So, you know, overall, as you said, correctly said, it was a thumping win. Yes, and the opening stand has always been an issue for Sri Lanka. They've kept changing uh, partners and on the, on the day uh, of the fifth ODI, it was Sadira Samaravikrama and Niroshan Dikwala. Uh, opening stand of 137 runs. Your th thoughts on that stand? Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I thought Dikwala, you know, he, he play, played his normal game. That's his game. I mean, he takes chances whenever needed and um, Sadira Samaravikrama looks solid. I'm very impressive with his technique, his mentality. The, uh, you know, the, the quick singles, I mean, I've seen after a long time, especially in the f fourth and the fifth one day, the quick singles, what they took, rotate the strike and put in the pressure back to the bowler. So, a lot of, a lot of positives between uh, Sadir and Niroshan. And that, uh, that uh, momentum actually carried on to the uh, later order batsman. And, you know, as I said, you know, they had a ball scoring 360 in Ketarama. You know, it's brilliant. Yes, and also Kusal Mendes had plenty of innings without a half century. I think it was over 20 innings. And uh, there were complaints as to why Taranga did not get as many opportunities. Uh, your thoughts on that? I mean, Upul Taranga, I thought, a bit unlucky, to be honest. I mean, he just played one game uh, and uh, he got dropped. Since then, uh, he was never looked uh, and you know, they were, the selectors and the management wanted Sadira to open. So, I thought uh, Upul was a bit unlucky, but that's cricket. I mean, someone... It's losing someone's gain, so that's exactly what happened. And uh, when it comes to comparing Kusal's given chances and Upul not given, I thought, um, you know, that's how it is when you're an experienced player, you're aging. You know, the, temp the, the chances tend to be less than a youngster who's budding up and, uh, you know, he's still 22. And the chances they give is more. I mean, that's been the trend for, for Sri Lanka cricket to, for a long time. So that's exactly what Upul, uh, happened to Upul. And it won't be easy for Upul now because, uh, as you know, Kusal Perra, well, he didn't, didn't play the last few games. He is expected to come back. I mean, he can open, he can bat in the middle. Yes. And Angelo Matthews is uh, expected to come as well. So, there are a lot of competition between the batsmen. So, it's not going to be easy. And also, Danush Gunatilaga. So, he is in the radar as well. So, a lot of competition. But uh, whoever is in form, I always say that whoever is in form should make the cut. So, we have enough time before the uh, New Zealand series. So, I think, uh, you know... The batting department will be something, the selectors will be, uh, you know, uh, very difficult to pick. Yes, yes, most certainly plenty of competition at the top of the order. And uh, Dinesh Chandimal focused a lot about fielding before this series. And in that fifth ODI, Sri Lanka held on to some brilliant catchers. Uh, Kusal Mendes in the slips, uh, Sadira Samaravikram in the covers. Uh, your thoughts on that performance in the field? Absolutely brilliant. I think bowling, batting, fielding, that's one of the perfect game of uh, one day cricket I've seen after a long time by the Sri Lankan boys, I thought, as you said, Kusal's catch, I mean, it was brilliant. First slip, I mean, going to his wrong side, which is not his uh, normal side, the left-hand side, took a brilliant one. Sadir Samarikram, wicket-keeper by trade, but brilliant catch at cow point. So, everything went well. That's how, it, that, that's, that's cricket for you. When you have the momentum, you, 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 you cruise through. So, that's where the professionalism comes in when you're not playing well. 
how you're going to play well. And that's where the consistency, all these little things comes up. But overall, as I said before, this momentum should be carried to the 2020, which is happening on uh, Saturday. And from there onwards, we should build up to the New Zealand too. And hopefully, that will be the start before we build up to the World Cup. Yes, and uh, Dinesh Chandimal was appointed uh, as captain for this series. And it was his maiden ODI half century as captain in that uh, game as well. He got uh, 80 runs of 73 balls at a very good pace as well. Uh, your thoughts on Chandimal's knock and uh, how he uh, set things up for Sri Lanka? Brilliant. I thought he batted well. He batted well. He batted according to the situation. And uh, I mean, I'm always, I keep telling, I mean, in any format, I think Chandi should, Chandimal should be there because he's experienced enough and he, he knows. I think probably after Angela Matthews, he's, he knows the best way it comes to how to play in a situation. So, you know, going forward, I think Chandimal's captain is very, very important. I mean, uh, he's very positive. And uh, having uh, five bo playing five bowlers also, I mean, that's his uh, way of way going forward. So, very impressive. And uh, overall, Chandi's captaincy too is really uh, impressive to see. Yes, uh, he has certainly been a very good leader from his young days. And let's go back to that fourth ODI where Sri Lanka got 273 for seven batting first. Tasun Shanak and uh, Niroshan Dikwala got half centuries. Uh, and uh, England were 132 for two. The game was in the balance, I must say. Joe Root was unbeaten on 37. Uh, you think uh, Sri Lanka had a chance in that game? Uh, I thought we did. I mean, the no ball. Uh, the Joe Root uh, got caught at short fine leg, which was called no ball by the uh, Squally umpire. That, that would have been, that, if that we could have gone, a new batsman coming in, we would have sniffed something. But that's how it is. I mean, when you don't have the luck, you don't have the luck. But yeah, it's brilliant uh, to see Dasun Sanagar. I mean, I remember hitting few sixes. I mean, he's a big pro prospect to have. I keep saying that we should consider him as an all rounder not as a batsman. He should work on his bowling. I think his bowling is going to be very crucial, especially playing in New Zealand, South Africa and England, especially over overseas conditions. So if he can provide us five overs, I think that's goal. And with his batting finish innings, finishing innings, being a finisher, along with Angel Matthews, if he bats at number five, I think uh, we'll have a good chance. Yes, uh, England did go on to win that ODI by 18 runs on Darkworth Lewis. And the series uh, ended at 3-1 after Sri Lanka's win uh, after the fifth ODI. And the series will move on uh, to the only T20 international. It will be on the 27th of October at the R Premadas International Stadium. Sri Lanka have already named their squad a very interesting squad. And uh, most interesting uh, name in that squad is Kamidu Mendis. Your thoughts on that inclusion? Brilliant. I thought uh, deservedly so. I mean, I know that he hasn't played any first class cricket, but the boy has some talent. He has ability, bowls, uh, bowls with his both arms and bats well the current situation. Even at the practice game as the England, scored a brilliant 60, uh, you know, patient 60. That's what uh, I thought I was, I was told that he's uh, in, the, in the radar of the uh, coaches and the selectors of the maturity level he showed for an, uh, tw not even a 20 role, he's still a teenager. So, you know, brilliant. I mean, I, 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 I want him to play 2020. I mean, at this level, but it's too early for him to think about one-day cricket and uh, uh, test cricket, in my opinion, because he hasn't played any tough cricket. I mean, 2020 is just that, you know, with his variations of both arms, we'll have another option. But when it comes to 50 overs and uh, longer version, I think uh, it's better if, you know, the selectors and the coaches give him a year or two of domestic cricket just to gain experience. Because he has the ability, but you need experience playing in this situation, so that will go a long way. Yes, uh, the Sri Lanka squad will be led by Tisara Pereira and uh, Niroshan Dikwala, Kusal Mendes, Kusal Pereira, Dinesh Chandimal, Dananjay De Silva, Kamidu Mendes, <coughs> Tasun Shahanaka, Akila Dananjay, Lakshan Sandakan, Isuru Udana, Lasit Malinga, Tushmanta Chamira, Kasun Rajita, and Nuan Pradeep. Uh, what do you think the makeup of the, the 11 would be? Uh, very good, sir. Very good, Scott. I'm happy to see Isuru Udana back in the fold. I mean, he has a brilliant. Uh, APL in Saja, where he uh, became the highest wicket take, I was told. So I think uh, he's deservedly so in the squad, and I, I will play him as well. And uh, looking at the squad, you know, I, I probably have the notion Dikwell and Kusal Perra to open. Kusal Mendis at three, Chandimal at four, Dananj at five, Dasun at six, Tisar at seven. Coming the Mendis at like straight away, I'll play him. And you have Isurudan who can hit the ball as well, and Lasit Maling and uh, Akira Dananj. That would be my 11. Personally, probably I think that should be the 11. But uh, overall, very strong. Every department has been covered with spin, good spin bowling, good fast bowling, and uh, you know, very attacking uh, top order. Yes, uh, with the momentum from the fifth ODI, you think uh, Sri Lanka should have stuck with Sadira Samar Vikrama to open with Niroshan Dikwal in this game? I mean, I don't think that you know, just because you are in form, you should straight away, you know, should uh, consider him for 2020s. Because I thought you know, he should 
he should earn it rather than given. So I think uh, you know he has done well for him, himself by scoring runs in the one day setup. But when it comes to 2020, he's uh, he has to wait for his time because I think Danushka Muntalika, being the uh, surprisingly not in the squad, being the uh, uh, the man of the series in the recently con concluded uh, provincial of uh, 2020 uh, tournament. So that's how competitive uh, the batting unit, as I told you before. So I think uh, you know I'm with uh, the selectors at this moment, not not have playing Sadira, but uh, getting the uh, the right paper, right right squad when it comes to the top order. Yes, uh, let's move on to some youth test cricket now. The first test uh, between Sri Lanka under-19s and Bangladesh under-19s concluded at the NCC grounds uh, last week. Sri Lanka only had 137 to win in that fourth innings, but unfortunately they were bowled out for 123. Think it was a disappointing performance? Absolutely. I mean, I was uh, I was at the game watching a few, watching a few of it. Uh, we did really well to uh, get them all out in second innings for 115. Our spinners bowled well, our quicks bowled well, some brilliant catchers, good fielding. And that momentum, we should have chased uh, 120, uh, 135, something like that. It's fallen short by 11, 13 runs. But overall, big, big, big respect towards the uh, under 19 boys because during the Asia Cup, Bangladesh squad, the entire squad is here. The, it's the same squad. But when, when it comes to our boys, there are you know, eight players not playing because of not ineligible to play for the 2020 World Cup. So. Uh, 20, 2020 World Cup. So what happens is, you know, eight players who are not can't play have been not considered. So sure. inexperienced squad, but giving a, a good fight a team like Bangladesh. I mean, you ad admit Bangladesh had a good team. I mean, they are under 19s always had good teams. So I thought uh, overall we did really well to come up there and bit unlucky to lose by 39. It would have been a heartbreaker. But overall, uh, pretty happy how it uh, how it turned out. Yes, uh, interesting to see the two coaches of those two teams. Uh, Navid Nawaz uh, is the coach of the Bangladesh under-19s and uh, Hashan Tilakaratna uh, is the coach of the Sri Lanka under-19s. Uh, two teammates from the past, Maha. Two NCC boys like me, that's <laughs> all I can say. I mean, Navid Nawaz is brilliant. I mean, uh, good to see him back in Sri Lanka. I mean, not with Sri Lanka cricket, but PC uh, with Bangladesh. I mean, he has done very well as a coach. I have uh, been under him while he was coaching. So, I mean, I always have a big respect towards him because he's a big motivator. Because I mean, I, when it comes to coaching, I believe a, who, who, a coach who can motivate the players can go a long way. So that's exactly what Navid Nawaz is. He's technical, technique-wise, he's good. Motivational-wise, he's good. So, you know, we have lost a good coach, but hopefully one day he'll turn out. And talking about Hashan Tilatna, he's been doing well as well. During the Asia Cup, we were runners-up. During this test match, we are doing well. So I think overall, uh, the two inches boys are shining. <laughs> Yes, and uh, it's uh, time to move on to some mercantile cricket. The semi-finals of the MCA Premier One Day Knockout Tournament is happening today. Uh, Mas Unicella is taking on Mas uh, Silveda. And I heard Maha saying that it's uh, quite a big rivalry between the two teams. Yeah, Unicella and Silveda both, both fall into MS management. But two different uh, teams, two different rivalries. I mean, Silveda is playing for the first time. I mean, Unicella has been playing for a long time now, but Silveda has been doing well. I mean, young team and um, you know, looking forward for the game as well as the other semi-finals. So, I mean, as I said in the last show, it's one of the most competitive uh, tournaments in Sri Lanka and it has to be given more, uh, more focus by, by the people. But unfortunately, at the moment, they're not. Hopefully, in future, we'll get that. Yes, uh, Mas Silveda, in fact, went on to beat on the league champions LB Finance in their quarter-final. So, they are definitely a team to watch out for. And the other semi-final will be played between Demo and Commercial Credit. Uh, now, it's time to move uh, on to the question of the week. Who is the highest ODI run scorer for Sri Lanka in 2018? That's the question for this week. And uh, the question last week was, in which stadium did Sri Lanka last beat England in an ODI? Obviously, this was before uh, the fifth ODI, and the answer was Westpac Stadium in Wellington. Uh, and it was a group stage a game of the ICC Cricket World Cup in 2015. Sri Lanka won by nine wickets, chasing 309. And uh, last week's winner is Pulina Malaka Bulat Singhala from Moratua. You are the winner, Pulina Malaka Bulat Singhala from Moratua. And uh, that is it from us uh, for this week's show. I'm sure there's plenty to catch up for in the coming week, especially with the Sri Lanka vs England T20 and the Test Series to look forward to as well. Until then, it's a goodbye from us.